Numbers chapter 24. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> and we're still looking at the uh, man, the false prophet Balaam, and uh, his attempts to curse Israel, which keep failing. And we're going to see why. Numbers chapter 24, verse 1. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not, as at other times, to seek for enchantments, but he set his face toward the wilderness. Balaam is finally catching on. God doesn't want you to curse Israel, and it's not going to stick. So you might as well give it up. Balaam was a slow learner, and it was his greed that made him a slow learner. He didn't want to admit the truth. Two, and Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. Now, <clears throat> as Balaam <clears throat> excuse me, looked over the Israelites, this may surprise you, but God's Spirit came upon him. Now, it's not, it's not a, a prelude to the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came into believers. He doesn't go into Balaam as he does to believers today. He came upon him. He came upon him to cause him to prophesy. And this is the first time that God tells us that his spirit came upon Balaam. And as we will see, the revelations are growing in intensity and in depth of meaning too and God is trying to get us to listen verse 3 and he took up his parable and said Balaam the son of Beor has said and the man whose eyes are open has said he has said which heard the words of God which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. Balaam says, I've seen a vision of God. I've heard his word. Balaam evidently at last understands God's purposes for Israel. But he's still not a man of faith. He's not saved. Verse 5. Balaam says, How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, in your tabernacles, O Israel, as the valleys are they spread forth, as gardens by the river's side, as the trees of ling aloes, which the Lord has planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. Balaam is referring to the general blessings that will be Israel's in the promised land. God's plan for Israel is for them to live in a second Edom, Eden, I should say. And, and, and that would be possible if they obeyed him. Verse 7, He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters. And his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. The Holy Spirit has shifted Balaam's mouth into high gear at this point. The prophetic blessings for Israel are really flowing now. And Balaam uses figurative language to bless Israel, just exactly what he did not want to do. Because in essence, he is saying the nation Israel was, is going to be so productive that they're going to live in luxury. And he also says that Israel's king and his kingdom will be great, greater than all others. And Agag, A-G-A-G, is most likely a title given to the Amalekite kings. And uh, now Balaam prophesies something Balak the king dreaded to hear. Look at verse 8. Look at this. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn or a wild bull. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, 
and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. And remember, these are not the words of an Israeli supporter. Balaam would have loved to curse Israel, collect his paycheck from Balak, and go home. But God didn't give him a chance to do that. God uses vivid language through Balaam to describe Israel's complete victory over all their enemies, and that would include the kingdom of Balak. Verse 9. He couched. He lay down as a lion, and as a great lion who shall stir him up. Blessed is he that blesses you, and cursed is he that curses you. And Balaam repeats the words of the Abrahamic covenant right here. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. Those who curse Israel will be cursed. And the remarkable thing is that Balaam's and Balak's heart's desire was to curse Israel. Instead of cursing Israel, he's cursing himself because of his heart's desire. Because he wants to curse Israel. And God says, you curse Israel, I'm going to curse you. So both Balaam and Balak are in big trouble. And Balaam, without even understanding, probably has just pronounced a curse on himself. He came to curse Israel, God turned the tables. He just cursed himself, and that curse is going to stick. And the scripture that comes to my mind is, who can bring anything against God's elect? And the other one, if God is for us, who can be against us? And, you know, God had a covenant blessing with Israel, and all the forces of hell combined are not strong enough to make a curse stick to them. God has declared believers today also to be righteous and justified, and no one can curse us either and have it stick. Verse 10, And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together. And Balak said to Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have altogether blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee to your place. I thought to promote you to great honor, but lo, the Lord has kept you from honor. And Balaam said to Balak, I spoke, or spoke I not to your messengers, which you sent to me, saying, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own mind. But what the Lord says, that will I speak. And now, behold, I go to my people. Come, therefore, and I will advertise you. In other words, I will counsel you what this people shall do to your people in the latter days. And, of course, Balak He's already furious, and he's not going to want to hear this. But he was really counting on Balaam to curse Israel. And that just has not come to pass, just the opposite. So in effect, he told Balaam, get lost, go home. Just don't even try to do me any favors, Balaam. And then, of course, he also adds, by the way, you blew it, you know. You blew it for yourself because you could have been rich. But now it's never going to happen. I ask you to curse Israel. But all you did was bless them, so you're going to go home poor. How does that make you feel? Well, Balaam didn't have a choice. He never should have showed up anyway. It was against God's will for him to go. Verse 15. And he took up his parable, here goes Balaam, and said, Balaam the son of Beor has said, and the man whose eyes are open has said, he has said, which heard the words of God, and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. Verse 17, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not near. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall arise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. So Balaam prophesies that Israel will have a royal deliverer. 
He's predicting the coming of the Messiah, of all people, to predict the coming of Messiah, Balaam. He says, and this great ruler is going to give Israel victory over Moab and over all her enemies. 18. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. In other words, shall grow strong. Edom, remember, wouldn't even allow Israel to pass through their land. And God commanded Israel not to attack them because of that or harm them in any way. But the Lord says here that one day Edom will become Israel's property. In fact, Edom and Seir represent all of Israel's enemies. And Balaam says, they're all going to look the dust, but Israel is going to flourish. And by the way, David conquered Edom in 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 19. He continues, Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remains of the city. And there's a time, still future, even to us, which will even surpass the time of David and Solomon for the greatness of Israel's kingdom. The greatness of Israel on that day is going to be glorious beyond belief. The Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to be sitting on the throne of David. And that's what's going to make it work. Jesus the King is going to, is going to exercise dominion over all people, all nations, everything everywhere and Israel will be the top country in the entire world with the Son of God being their king verse 20 and when he looked on Amalek he took up his parable and said Amalek was the first of the nations but his latter end shall be that he perish forever you know shortly after Israel left Egypt the Amalekites attacked them and if you remember, Aaron and Hur supported the arms of Moses as he held them up in prayer. And consequently, God gave Israel victory over Amalek at that time. And he also said, write this down. God said, write this down. One day, I'm going to wipe them from the face of the earth. And Balaam here repeats that prediction. 21. And he looked on the Kenites <clears throat> and took up his parable and said, strong is your dwelling place. And you put your nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenite shall be wasted until Asher shall carry you away captive. The Kenites were closely tied to the Midianites who were under God's curse. And this is really an astonishing prediction. Assyria wasn't, well, Assyria was actually a city-state in Balaam's day. Nothing much, really. And they were hundreds of years away from becoming an international superpower. And still, here it said that they would one day conquer the Kenites. Nobody would have believed it if they would have heard Balaam say it, unless you believe the Word of God. And it came to pass, so you better believe the Word of God, right? Always. 23. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when God does this? And ships shall come from the coast of Chittim, and shall afflict Asher, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. And Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place, and Balak also went his way. So Balaam went home, but not before given another prophecy. Um, Cyprus here refers to, it refers to Rome and Eber refers to the Hebrews. And Balaam, by the Holy Spirit, looks far into the future and predicted the conquering of the remains of Assyria and the Israelites by the great Roman Empire. 